Welcome to this combat mission um, tutorial. Uh, this is tutorial number three and uh, we're going to look at the quick battle screen and setup. Now quick battle is I think quite important because it gives a lot of longevity to the uh, game. Uh, anyway, let's just get started. So you've got the quick battle option here on the menu so just press the button and now you are basically um, faced with a screen of options which you should consider a split into three parts there's the battle part here there's the date and time here and below we've got the uh, various information about the attackers and defenders so let's just do the um, simple one first of all over here on the top left hand side now what we're doing is Fortress Italy because um, this is the la latest version, but the principles are the same for Battle for Normandy. Now you'll notice here on uh, the year there is no choices, and that's because the invasion of Sicily, which the um, base game of Fortress Italy is based on, happened in 1943. When the modules for the invasion of Italy come out, that will increase to 44 and possibly. We have the uh, months, and we can only choose July and August. Again, as modules come out, uh, that will expand. It's the same for um, Battle for Normandy, that's restricted on months. But um, when the Market Garden module is released for Battle for Normandy, that will um, open up more months to be able to be used. Daylight. This is uh, time of day, and so you can choose dawn, day, dusk, night, or random, and we'll leave it at day daylight. Weather selections again. We've got clear, hazy, thick haze, overcast, light rain, heavy rain, downpour, mist, mist and rain, light fog, light fog and rain, and random. Um, when you're talking about uh, heavy rain and downpour and even light rain, you might have problems in certain types of terrain getting um, a little bit wet and so could, can bog down your heavier um, armoured vehicles. Now uh, you, as you can see you've got the random one so I mean if, if you want to just have a, a random time of day and a random um, weather that's all those options are there and also if you because you can use this to set up a game against someone um, online either through play by email PB, PBM or if you are directly um, connecting to someone okay so rarity now this is a bit of a funny one and I can sort of see why it's over on this side but I could also reason why it should be over here under the various battle types. Now rarity I've got it set to strict but you've got several options strict, standard, loose and none and this relates actually to the time period and also the what the actual uh, module base game is, is about and this restricts to the various levels of what type of equipment is available to you and what we'll see in, in a, a minute or two is that there are two columns for purchasing units and one of them is a rarity column and basically the more stricter you make this uh, setting the more expensive units are um, I mean, no, this is my understanding of it. Uh, I mean, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but uh, that's the way I, I believe it works. Okay, and s so we'll, we'll see a little bit more of that on the purchase screen. Now, over here, let's now start on the battle type. And you've got uh, various different settings meeting engagement, probe, attack, assault, and random. Now, meeting engagement is basically going to be. Uh, you're on one side of the map, the enemy's on the other side of the map, 
and you're going to come together and clash to take the objectives. Uh, probe, attack and assault are all defender and attacker type battles. Now the reason why there are three of these is because it's a different type of attack. So a probe is sort of a light incursion against the enemy, trying to find them, etc. And f because the defender is in a defended position, um, the probe setting means the attacker will get a few extra points to buy units. On attack they'll get even more points to buy units and on assault the attacker will get uh, a nice chunk of extra points. Random, again it just means it uh, goes straight to um, pick whichever one it likes, but we'll keep with meeting engagement. Um, next we can choose the battle size from tiny, small, medium, large, huge and random. We'll keep to medium. Then we've got the length of the battle we can choose from 30 minutes all the way up to 2 hours. And map selection. And here we can do an automatic which means it will randomly pick the map. Or we can do human. Now the map selection is going to be filtered. That There are... Um, I think it's 400 quick battle maps in this um, Fortress Italy game. And they, the selection, which we'll see in a, a couple of minutes, will be filtered according to the battle type battle, and battle size. So um, all the sort of ones which are specifically assault, attack and probe will be filtered out. Now you will see on some of the names parts of those um, in and that can do with the battle size. It's all very a little bit grey but the thing to remember is that when you choose a quick battle and you see the selection of maps available to you that is not the complete selection of maps available. It would be nice if um, they did have something where you could just scan through all the, the lists of maps, but they haven't done that. Okay. So now we go on to the um, type of attacker and defender forces that we're going to see. Um, you can see we can choose US Army, German Army, Luftwaffe, and no, that doesn't mean aircraft, that means they're ground forces. The Italian Army, random random allied or random axis and on the defender size side sorry you've got the same selection combat force we can limit it to infantry only mech infantry only armor only airborne infantry only or a mix means you can pick from anything so it's stick to mix um, and again you've got the same thing on the uh, other side. So, I mean, if you wanted to try out a mixture of infantry and armour against uh, German infantry in a defensive position, you can do that. Now, unit purchase, you can use human or automatic. And we're going to use um, human because I want to uh, show you the purchase screen and the options there. And uh, we'll do automatic on this side. I'm not going to actually play through the battle, don't worry, it's not going to be that long this uh, tutorial. Um, automatic means that the computer will automatically pick the forces. Map preview. Now, this basically means that uh, when the selection comes up for the units you will get a little box up so it's saying for you to look at the map. So you can look at the map and look at the terrain and, and see oh is, is this tank country, is this geared more towards infantry, is it very open etc. When you're playing online against someone or played by email it's um, an etiquette to have preview allowed unless you specifically choose no preview. 
Uh, force adjustment is uh, just a, a positive and negative change for the attacker. If you decide that um, they want to have extra forces, maybe you're trying to crudely um, mimic a, an actual battle, or, or maybe you want to actually try and attack a a defender with uh, a small a smaller force than what's uh, defending. Okay. Okay. So say we've done all all of our selections. So we just press OK. And we have to wait. And here we come with to the um, map selection screen. Now, as you remember, we we did a medium, but you can see that there are others that um, popped up here as well. And like I said, um, it's a very very strange criteria that they've done. And you can see that all of these are meeting engagements, and that's what I think that they're doing. It's sort of saying, okay, you've chosen all medium maps, so all the medium maps we're going to sort of include, all the meeting engagement ones, and it's exciting stuff. Okay, so just quickly go through. You can see there's, a, there's not that much many maps that met our selection criteria. If we'd chosen different selection criteria, we, we would have seen a lot more. Or if we'd installed a lot more uh, maps that uh, have been produced by uh, the very good uh, modding community, then uh, we, we'd have a wider selection. But uh, just for argument's sake, let's just pick this one medium rough. Okay, so now we press the fight button. We select in our map, and that says, "Okay, what force do you want to be? Do you want to be the attacker, or do you want to be the defender?" Well, we're going to be the attacker, and now we come into the screen which says, "How do you want to play this game?" And you can do real time, one player, turn based, one player, which is my preference two players hot seat which means it's all on one computer and you just um, swap over between turns between the two of you and to stop any funny business as uh, I'm aware that uh, one of my friends was uh, got up to on another game um, you supply a password so when it's my turn and it comes up with the allied screen, it wants the allied pa player's password and then it wants the next, the Axis player's password so that's quite nice um, is it an email game? in which case uh, it, will select, it will go through the process up to a point produce an email file, dump that out into the outgoing email and then you can send it off to your opponent or is it two player internet, so direct contact so we're going to do one player turn based and now we've got the skill level and the differences between I've mentioned about scenario or for tester you know, in a moment um, basically uh, the differences between going up from basic training up to iron is fog of war where um, basic training if you spot another unit and you click on the little floating, floating icon you'll see all the information about it if you use iron and this is scaled upwards iron then you'll just see oh it's rifle infantry that's it you'll know who they are or anything else and let's put it very basically um, the other aspect as well is mortars and artillery they'll have more realistic lead time before they start firing after you um, called it in. Scenario author test is slightly different. Um, this is useful for people when they're testing their uh, scenarios because they can see the enemy players units and see what they're doing and also you might find it if you are totally stuck and at a total loss to play in the game or anything else apart from seeing exactly what's going on is not your cup of tea 
um, then you can choose scenario or for test and just see everything that's going on. It's not a fun way of playing it and not the intended way of using this um, option, but it's there for you if you want to play like that. But if you play uh, against people over the internet, either through mail or directly, you won't be using this unless you've got a friend that you're doing with who's quite happy about that. Okay, so we picked iron. We press OK. And now it's come up with the um, troop um, purchase screen. And let's just quickly go over this. Now, we've got over here in this section, it says what our budget is, how much we spent, and how much is remaining. And if you notice, we've got two columns. One is points, and the other one is rarity. And um, if you remember, I said about the strict rating, that uh, we've got it very strict, um, so there'll be a lot of control over what we can and can't purchase. Suggestions. Now if we press this, then and we'll do that in a second, it will come up and uh, give us a selection over here under Activated Troops. Map Preview is our button. We're not going to press that um, just yet, because I want to uh, go into the, the screen beforehand. Um, you've got the different uh, formations you might want to try, um, specialist teams if you want specifically to add uh, any, any specialised teams after. Say you've uh, gone formations, which is the normal setup, and you've got a, an infantry battalion of uh, some sort you've purchased, but you think, ah, oh, I want some. AT guns or additional AT guns or, or anything and you've got all these AT guns etc down here um, also single vehicles not showing anything up and then you can actually this is the um, quality of the units of the uh, men in the units anyway, let's go back to formations which is the normal thing now down here we can actually um, select from the different uh, types of units, so mech infantry, and you can see up here the um, battalions and um, troops, etc. Changes according to the what we've we pick. And there's fortifications down here, which are quite expensive. And the first figure down here is the um, cost, and over here is the um, rarity cost, if I recall correctly. Okay, now what we're going to do is use the suggestions button, just to show you how that works. And it doesn't matter what you've got selected, it's going to construct a force based on your points. So you just press the button, and here we go, and it's given us a, I don't know whether you can see this or not, but a, a platoon of engineers, armoured, uh, second platoon of mortar, medium, third platoon of mortar, medium, fourth platoon of tanks, and a recon section. You've got over here the uh, two columns of costs, and you can see down here that we've got 21 points left over, and on rarity side we've got 688. But anyway, back to over here. You've got the little plus sign here, and if you press the plus sign, you can see what is actually in your um, units that it's given you. And also you get little submenus as well. Now a word of warning, this you can expand out on some forces, and they'll go beyond this point here but you can't scroll down, you have to close up some of the ones that are higher up. Okay, so you might deci decide, no, that's not the for sort of force I want, although actually I think that is quite a good one. Um, so you just press, press suggestions again, and you get this little screen which just says, oh, you, you've pressed this again, it's going to replace everything on here, and you just press continue. And you see it's giving you another selection there. If you press suggestions again, 
it changes the um, troops but you don't get that box again so let's just flick through here we've got mortars recon lots of mortars there has been a, a lot of discussion on the uh, main forum about this suggestions doesn't often give you a, a really good selection um, and I mean that's fair enough because you may want to tailor it to your own needs I don't see a problem with that okay so I mean we've got here a light tank tank battalion and a recon I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I wanted to show you different things on on this and as you can see now you can see that some things are, are blanked out and that's because the um, computer has automatically removed these so that you fit within the points allocation now what we can do is that, I mean if we wanted to uh, have extra uh, say infantry we might turn around and say well to be honest I don't really need uh, say this B company of tanks I've got three Stuart tanks that's the M5A1 and I don't really need this B company and down here you can see you've got delete button and you just delete and it's greyed out and it's gone and we've got our points back now we might turn around and say how oh, I want uh, some more range I want some rangers now you can't select individual ones down here and buy them you've got to select the whole battalion and that's, you've just got the purchase button and it adds it down here but as you can see we've gone now way over our selection so uh, let's get rid of that because we seem to have pressed that twice now to reduce that we go into it and we can start start looking at the companies because some of them can have um, different pieces of equipment and you can see that down here once you get down to the lower level that uh, it will actually show you all the pieces of equipment that you've got and over here you've got the experience motivation and fitness so um, you want to be careful with um, experience because green and conscript those guys tend to run quite easily um, and you might decide well you know I do want to keep a platoon or two of these guys so I'm going to delete those as you can see this number is going down I don't want the weapons so I get rid of those but I keep the headquarters well you've got to on the high level because uh, of the uh, command rate and uh, so you're keeping S company but uh, maybe you want to get rid of you can see the different um, purchase value so let's just go into Q and it, you can see you've got um, again different uh, types of infantry so we can get rid of that and let's get rid of yeah let's get rid of that company um, and there you go so I've now added um, a cut down ranger battalion after removing some tanks now it could be that you've now gone into you've thought about it a little while and think hang on actually I want tanks back but to do that you've got to uh, first of all remove the um, well you could do this either way actually but you want to remove the range of battalion you've just added let's close this up and you want to recover the um, light tanks that you had and the way to do that is if you click on the higher level which I can just about make out I've got a revive button now down here and I press that and of course it revives the whole lot so you may end up having to uh, removing something to bring it back down and once you are ready um, you just press the OK button now 
what's happening now is that um, it'll be loading the map for me. Um, for play by email, you'd tend to get a screen come up, I believe, that will just say ask you for a password, if I recall correctly, which you enter, and that's going to be your password for the remainder of the game. And you don't want to tell that to your opponent, and you don't want to make it blank. I'm not sure actually if it comes up with an error message now, but um, just waiting for it to finish. So that gives the game a lot of variety and longevity, as I have said earlier on. People are constantly making maps, and now with the new overlay system, people can make very accurate maps. Okay, here we go. Now this is the briefing screen. It's a quick battle. So there's no designer notes or anything like that because it's something we've self-generated. But it gives us all the basic information that we've got down that we can show here or that we've uh, selected and that will appear for your opponent as well. So he can verify that you've made the choices that you've both agreed on. Um, just press OK and that brings us up to the map and we're in the setup zone and we can set ourselves up as we want now you may notice that there is a grid that I've got and that is um, a mod I've installed I don't normally have the grid mod but I thought I'd show it to you anyway because it can be useful and people have done this there are, there are a couple of people that have done grid mods and you can also get these for uh, Battle for Normandy as well and the reason I've done it is because I just want to spend a couple of moments talking about the map and uh, looking at the terrain in terms of your setup now what this grid does is it can make it easier to spot little dips and bumps in the terrain so you might be able to spot places where you want to place infantry and say you know on this uh, we've got to take this building it looks like um, I mean I could spot that little dip there for infantry myself um, but you, there can be places where it can be quite useful uh, to see the grid if you want to and you can keep it for, in for the length of the game um, if you only want it for the setup you can see here, here it shows off the, um, the way the terrain moves a little bit better close up here um, you can for subsequent moves then just remove it from your mods folder and uh, it won't appear again I mean that's the thing about when we talk about mods um, they are not game play changing mods they are graphical mods um, so you could be playing against someone and they've got a different set of mods to you and the underlying gameplay is exactly the same it's just that the appearance might be different uh, maybe for uh, they didn't like this grass being so yellow so they've changed that skin tile to a darker green or something like that or maybe they've changed this type of tree to look like a telegraph pole or something but for all intents and purposes when the game looks at that tile it is looking at the name and says oh this is grass therefore I will treat it as grass and apply all the um, different parameters to it um, if you changed uh, the look of water to grass the game would still treat it as water 
because all you're changing is the skin. Okay, so what I would say is when, when you do get the map and you're doing the setup, look at the objectives, go down low, look from the enemy's point of view, how they can see you, and sometimes it's useful to use Alt T to just get rid of the t trees and just put the tree stumps up. Just look the way he's going and, and think about what would you do to defend this? You know, he might put troops down here to maybe an AT gun or something to cover this flank. And uh, just think about what he's going to do and then find the best avenue that you're going to do your attack and pursue it. Actually, this is quite a nice map. I've never looked at this one before. So it's useful for setting up your battle plan and it can take you a while just to look at the map scan along, look, look at the details of it and it, if you're serious about it then um, you know it will take you a while I've just started a, a tawny battle where, where I've got um, some uh, troops and it, I played on that map before which is specifically designed for the tournament so I had a good idea of the layout but it still took me about an hour to set up my troops so I mean you can just sort of, oh yeah I'm going to uh, have all the tanks just, everyone just roar down this flank and that's up to you if you want to do that uh, but uh, expect to be frustrated because if your opponent's been more careful he, he might have you coming into <coughs> fire traps that uh, is just going to rip you apart and you can't then complain about the game if you're not taking uh, a reasonable amount of time to look at the terrain and where you're going to attack how you're going to attack it's entirely in your hands um, and it's down to experience as well what you're looking at so I mean there are lots of people that are more than willing to play um, play by email or directly online with people but I would advise if you want to have someone teach you how to play all the little bits and pieces then then mention it to them right up front say say to them I'd like to play against against someone but can you teach me if you start a combative um, battle against someone and then during the battle say oh by the way can you teach me where are you blah 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 they're not going to be probably too pleased some people might turn around and say yeah yeah that's fine okay we'll forget about it but some people who have spent ages setting up their side you know an hour or more looking at the terrain and setting up and then you just turn around and say I want to just be trained where are you I want to learn how to attack they're not going to be too happy about that but if you say first right up front say teach me I want to, want to know how to do things then you'll find an awful lot of people will just say yeah sure fine we'll set up a battle and they'll take you through, through it so it's a little bit of etiquette it's a little bit of um, consideration for other other people um, you know, I've had that happen to me before where suddenly people have turned around and said, Oh, what are you doing over there? Oh, you've got so and so over there, is that right? And I'm not going to give, I'm, it's meant to be a competitive battle. I'm not going to give them intelligence that uh, they should be using scouts to get. And, uh, you know, then turning around and saying, Oh, I want to be taught how to play this. I've sent, spent ages setting up. Okay, well, that's my moan, but, uh, you know, it's a very friendly community. Uh, who, um, if you talk to them in the, um, with a reasonable amount of respect, they are very friendly and will help anyone. Okay, well, um, that's it for me, uh, the end of this uh, video. 
I'm thinking about doing another one, a part four, to show you how to the basics of creating maps. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching.